And welcome back to The Kiosk Presents. You know, there's nothing that weighs more on people than their finances, how they're handling money, and what they're doing to be able to hopefully build on what they're on what they're doing financially and really I guess for most people when you when you ask them where they stand financially it might just be getting ahead you know barely surviving and fortunately there's an organization that that's uh, doing some reports that help study the ability of Americans in every state to manage their financial lives and here to talk to us about it today is Jerry Walsh who's the president of FINRA Investor Education Foundation. And she's going to tell us about a study that was just released, uh, kind of giving us a, a temperature on where people are at financially. How are you today, Jerry? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Please tell us a little bit about this study and kind of where it came from, why it was organized, and, and, uh, and then we'll ask more about kind of how it relates to people in New York State. The 2012 National Financial Capability Study is a project of the FINRA Investor Education Foundation. We consulted with President Obama's Financial Capability Advisory Council and also with the Department of Treasury and other federal agencies on putting together the survey to gauge how Americans stack up when it comes to financially capable behavior. And that includes things like making ends meet, planning for the future, managing financial products, and financial knowledge and decision making. So we surveyed about 25,000, more than 25,000 U.S. adults, and we were able to slice and dice the data across a variety of demographic factors and also state by state. And we were able to compare some of the data with the first wave of the study, which we did back in 2009. And, and what ultimately will be the benefit of the study? You know, how can that be put into practice in ways that will be practical for people to improve their ability to be financially literate? That's a very fair question. And the beauty of the study is that it informs not only individuals where they stack up, but also policymakers and educators who are involved in building financial capability. So the study shows areas where America needs to approve, and there are quite a few of those areas. Could you name a few? Sure. Um, financial literacy is one of the most important areas that Americans can improve upon because we gave all the respondents a five-question quiz, and it was pretty basic concepts, things like interest rates, mortgages, and inflation, the basics of day-to-day -day financial living. And only 60, well, 61 percent of Americans failed that quiz. Only 14 percent were able to get all five of the questions right. And in New York State, 64 percent got a failing grade. So New York State fared uh, how compared to sort of the, the mean across the country? Well, on different measures, New York was ahead of the game. So financial literacy was one of the deficit points. But New Yorkers tend to be much better when it comes to managing credit cards. Far fewer New Yorkers carry a balance. And almost 60 percent of New Yorkers report that they pay off their credit cards on time in full every month. And that's a positive sign. Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, now, how about other uh, matters such as, uh, uh, you know, saving? Are you finding that people are, are saving well in New York State and, and uh, things like that? New York comes fairly close to the national average on a number of the savings areas. They're planning mm. ahead for retirement. They're planning for their children's education. But when you look at the numbers, so they're in line with the rest of the nation when you look at the numbers, but in mm. many cases, the numbers are low. For example, nationwide, only about a third of parents who have dependent children are putting money aside for their child's college education. And given mm. that student loan debt was one of the very strong drivers of feeling overwhelmed by debt, that's yes. an important thing to be doing. Right. Well, what can, because certainly there were many, many parents in the early stages of the you know, 2000, 2001, 2002 that might have been sending their uh, kids to college and maybe the kids were getting a college loan. Those parents were co-signing for it, for example. And then times change, the economy sours, you get in and, and to, to the later uh, part of the, of the decade and some of those students aren't able to repay those loans and now the parents are obligated to help you know along those lines uh, you know are, are those the sort of things that um, can be anticipated through the studies and and, the, and and what can be done about those kind of scenarios 
Well, certainly we did see that once adults no longer had financially dependent children in the household, their attitudes toward money and their ability to make ends meet seemed to improve. So one of the demographic factors of what drives financial stress is the presence of dependent children. But what's more important is that people take a look at their personal balance sheet. All of us have one, companies and individuals and take a look at whether you're operating in the red or operating in the black. Now, mm -hmm. we saw that in New York, New Yorkers are doing a very good job of making sure that they're paying down their credit cards. But still, New Yorkers are pretty similar to the national average when it comes to having medical debt and mm -hmm. student loan debt and other types of debt. So it's important to make sure that you're prioritizing the debt you have. And if you have high interest credit card debt or alternative borrowing methods like payday loans or refund anticipation loans, that you pay those down first and yeah. then get yeah. your spending under control. Definitely. Well, thank you very much, Jerry, for this information. Where can people go um, to get more information about the study and, and, and what they might be able to do with the, with the knowledge they'll find there? All the data, slicing and dicing by state, is available at usfinancialliteracy.org. Sorry, that's usfinancialcapability.org. And you can also take the quiz to see how you stack up against fellow New Yorkers and also the rest of the nation. Super, that's outstanding. Well, thank you so much for telling us a little bit more about this. And folks, please, I encourage you to go check out that website and find out a little bit more about how you can uh, understand what's going on in our state and how that may be applicable to you. Jerry, thanks very much for joining us on the Kiosk Presents. Thank you.